Headed. Okay, so it's uh, 7.30, at least it is on, on uh, my clock. So we'll start. So what I'm going to do today to start, because today's a simple day, it's just a basic introduction. And uh, I'm just going to start with the uh, prayer to the Holy Spirit, because it's really important that we invoke the Holy Spirit to be with us during these next 33 days as I just guide you through um, the consecration so that uh, everything that we do is of the Holy Spirit and pleasing to the Holy Spirit. So if you're following along and you have your own copy of the book, right, hard copy, um, it's on page uh, 247. If you are if you have the e-version, I don't know what page that's on, but you can follow along, okay? Here we go. We're going to pray the Veni Sancti Spiritus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, send down those beams which sweetly flow in silent streams from thy bright throne above. O come, thou Father of the poor, O come, thou source of all our store, come fill our hearts with love. O come, of comforters the best, O thou, the soul's delightful guest, the pilgrim's sweet relief. Rest art thou in our toil most sweet, refreshment in the noonday heat, and solace in our grief. O blessed light of life thou art, fill with thy light the inmost heart, of those who hope in thee. Without thy Godhead, nothing can have any price or worth in man. Nothing can harmless be. Lord, wash our sinful stains away. Refresh from heaven our barren clay. Our wounds and bruises heal. To thy sweet yoke our stiff necks bow. Warm with thy fire our hearts of snow, our wandering feet recall. Grant to thy faithful, dearest Lord, whose only hope is thy sure word, the sevenfold gifts of grace. Grant us in life thy grace that we in peace may die and ever be in joy, joy before thy face. Amen. Alleluia. Heavenly Father, during this time of these 33 days of coming to know and love the great Saint Joseph, we ask you to pour out your spirit upon us that we can discover things that set our hearts on fire with this great man, the man gifted to be called the father of our Savior and the husband of the Virgin Mary, and our spiritual father. We bring to you all of our intentions during this time, especially for ourselves, for deeper conversion, for our loved ones, for conversions, and for peace of heart and holiness of life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, everybody. So um, I'm so excited that we're actually doing this. We made it happen. I figured out how to work this stuff. And I think I've got it down. So next 33 days, guys, we're going to be here at the same time. And it's going to be fantastic. So I'm grateful that you guys are here. You don't know what this means to me uh, as a priest, especially, um, and as the author of the book. To know that someone likes your work and reads your stuff is pretty cool. Um, I mean, it really does mean a lot to me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And as a matter of fact, you know, this book is dedicated to you. It really is. If you have a copy of it, you know that um, the introduction or the uh, dedication is to you because this was the most difficult thing that I've ever done in my 17, almost 17 years of being a priest when it comes to writing a book. I have 14 books. This is the most difficult one. I There was a time when I wasn't even sure that it was going to be published. Um, that's how, you know, it was just crazy stuff going on. But I asked for prayers and you guys came through. Um, and I'm looking at my glasses. They look so dark here. Maybe I got to lower this light on that one thing. That might be better, huh? Hold on, guys. I'm going to adjust that light because I have to wear my glasses to be able to read. So don't, you know, I don't want you guys tripping on my face because you can't. Um, it just looks like it's not right there. Sorry, guys. Still working through some bugs, I guess. I just don't want to look weird. So you can't see me. Some people trip on that. Like, your eyes look dark. What are you hiding, Father? I'm not hiding anything, man. It's my reading glasses, bro. Um, okay. Maybe that's a little better. I can't tell. Well, if I look like that, but I can't stare at you like that. Well, sorry guys. Just have to deal with that. They're, and they're not those kind that turn with light. It's just the way that it is. Okay. So, um, it's dedicated to you. And the dedication says to the many people who prayed that this book would come to fruition, your prayers and sacrifices made it happen. Thank you. And I mean that. I, I really do mean that. Um, you guys made this happen. Those of you who are praying, I'm so grateful. So at the beginning of the book, I have a quote from St. Peter Julian Imard, 
phenomenal saint. This guy's out of control with his love for the Blessed Sacrament and also St. Joseph and Our Lady and everything holy. But he says this, Devotion to St. Joseph is one of the choicest graces that God can give to a soul, for it is tantamount to revealing the entire treasury of our Lord's graces. When God wishes to raise a soul to greater heights, he unites it to St. Joseph by giving it a strong love for the good saint. Mm. My friends, you know, you've been chosen. You've been selected to, to go to great heights in the spiritual life because God wants you to know and love St. Joseph. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the basics of the book because today is an introduction day. There's not a lot today when it goes to day one, which we'll do. Um, but I just want to give you an introduction, a background to how this whole thing came about and um, what what kind of what it's all about. It's really important that you read the introduction to the book. Uh, a lot of people don't read introductions to books. They just jump right into chapter one. Sometimes that's fine. No worries, right? Introduction sometimes you're just thanking a bunch of people. But this one, you really need to read the introduction to the book because it's important. It sets up the whole reason for why that this thing exists. And I don't, I'm not going to sit here and read that for you because it's it's kind of a long introduction, to be honest. But I felt that I needed to do it. And I basically set up the, the premise that now is the time of St. Joseph. And that's a bold claim. That's a really bold claim. I'm just an ordinary dude, man. I'm not like some mystic. I don't have visions or locutions or anything. But looking at this stuff, nobody could deny that the church has done more in the last 150 years to promote St. Joseph and to honor him publicly than she's done in the previous 1,800 years of Christianity. It's true. It's factual. I've done the research, and everybody who's done this, they can affirm that. And in the in the introduction, I talk about some of those things. I've got a long list here where I list some of these more significant ones that have happened specifically since 1868. But did you know that right now, 2020, we're celebrating the 150th anniversary of when St. Joseph was proclaimed the patron of the Universal Church? That was uh, declared, proclaimed in 1870 by Blessed Pope Pius IX. So this is the 150th anniversary year right now, 2020. This is a huge year for St. Joseph. That's why there's a lot of stuff going on for St. Joseph, both good and attacks. No kidding. So after 1870, you had the founding of a whole bunch of religious communities dedicated to St. Joseph from really holy founders. One of my favorites, St. Joseph Morello. Founded the Oblates of St. Joseph. Those guys are great. Some real good friends of mine. Plus, they, they run the Shrine of St. Joseph out in Santa Cruz, California, Guardian of the Redeemer Shrine. It's uh, it's a, right across the street from a place called Steamer Lane. It's the best surf break in uh, Central California. I don't know how I know that. Just saying. Um, 1879, St. Joseph appeared in Knock, Ireland. Right? In classic form, too. He didn't say anything. Nobody did, actually. But it's an approved apparition. See, this stuff, it starts picking up speed. When you acknowledge a title of St. Joseph, boom, things start happening. Same thing happens with Our Lady, right? When you start to, when you give a title about Our Lady, all of a sudden she shows up in an apparition calling herself by that title. Remember, remember Lords and the Immaculate Conception? Well, here we have St. Joseph coming on the scene now. Then in 1889, we get the first encyclical on St. Joseph by uh, Pope Leo XIII. And what a pope he was. Wow. But isn't it kind of sad that it took until 1889 to get an encyclical on St. Joseph? That's almost shameful. It's almost embarrassing. But we finally got it. And now, you know, more and more and more things are coming. After that, we get saints, mystics, blesseds, who start to establish like major shrines around the world to St. Joseph. There's this one in Spain that not a lot of people know about. But I know there's some friends here from Spain who are watching this. Blessed Petra of St. Joseph. Phenomenal saint, blessed. She established a shrine to St. Joseph in Spain. I haven't been to that one yet, to that shrine. I want to go someday. But then even here in, in North America, we have the great St. Andre Bassett, right? Brother Andre, who established the oratory of St. Joseph in Montreal. And I know some of you are, are watching from Montreal. Love that place. Love that. The world's largest shrine dedicated to St. Joseph is in North America, in Canada. What a blessing. What a blessing. And then a whole bunch of other stuff. We had the official approval of the litany of St. Joseph in 1909, Pope St. Pius X. It took until 1909 
to get it officially codified, canonized, so to speak, uh, in, 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 in the church, public you know, liturgy. Now, the amazing thing about the, lit the litany of St. Joseph is a lot of people are familiar with the litany of Loretto, right? That's the one for Our Lady, and it's beautiful prayer. I love that prayer. Well, this is like the, the counterpart to that for St. Joseph, and it's phenomenal, phenomenal. So much so that the, the litany of St. Joseph forms the template for the book. And I'll explain what I mean by that as I go through, you know, leading up to day one and then doing day one, what that means. Because that litany is power. It is so powerful. And we're going to be praying it every day at the end of these uh, little, little sessions here. So then after that, St. Joseph appears in Fatima. Did you know that St. Joseph was at Fatima? He was. Yeah. Uh, not, uh, somehow people miss that or they don't write about it. They don't talk about it. But at the last apparition, October 13th, 1917, he appeared holding the Christ child. And they together, father and son, Joseph and Jesus, blessed the world. Huge for Fatima's peace plan, right? And we're not going to get peace. We're not going to get the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary until we get the family right. Family is the building block of civilization, of society. If that's all jacked up, Mary's heart's not going to triumph. Mary's heart's not going to, you know, be everywhere ushering us to Christ. We've got to get that right. That's what Our Lady wants in a huge way. And I'll go through that in these next 33 days. Then we get uh, Blessed Be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, put into the divine praises, theological journals, all kinds of other stuff leading up to um, St. Joseph's name being put in the Mass. Again, it's almost embarrassing. Actually, it is embarrassing that for, for so long, St. Joseph's name was not in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. What? Right? That's almost unbelievable to think about. But now he is, and he's in all the Eucharistic prayers. Praise the Lord. So I want to read to you uh, uh, a section from uh, Pope St. John the Twenty-Third. He had a great love for St. Joseph. And he said that now is the time, basically he's saying now is the time for St. Joseph. And he talks about Joseph's, this building wave of St. Joseph coming. And he wrote this in 1961. He says. Um, Joseph, except for some slight sprinkling of references to him here and there in the writings of the fathers of the church, for long centuries remained in the background in his characteristic concealment, almost as a decorative figure in the overall picture of the Savior's life. It took time for devotion to him to go beyond those passing glances and take root in the hearts of the faithful, and then surge forth in the form of special prayers and of a profound sense of trusting abandonment. The fervent joy of pouring forth these deepest feelings of the heart in so many impressive ways has been saved for modern times. Right now. Right now. See, there's, there's never been stuff like uh, a total consecration to St. Joseph. This stuff was never really done because the church hadn't fully developed a, a doctrine of St. Joseph. The church itself was kind of like, who are you, St. Joseph? I mean, we, we know you're, you're there, but we don't know much about you. And it hasn't been, really been developed. But did you know that, and these are some things that aren't in the book, you know, that there's been prophecies about this. In the 16th century, there was this Dominican priest, Father Isidore uh, de Isolanis. He talked about a forthcoming era of St. Joseph when the church would be going through a very difficult time. Hello, right? And then, the faithful and the, the church leaders would turn to St. Joseph and acknowledge his great dignity and who he is. And then the church would experience a revolution of holiness, a renewal. My friends, we need that more than ever right now. There's another saint uh, that was from Spain, um, St. Jose Mañanet. Probably never heard of him unless you're from Spain, but he's a great one. He talked about this, a forthcoming era. Of St. Joseph. He talked about that in the 19th century. And then we have in the 20th century, you know, a pope talking about this. Something is happening. The Holy Spirit is doing something. So we're blessed to be a part of this, to live right now. Difficult times? Oh, no doubt. But now something's coming. Something big is coming with St. Joseph. And the devil doesn't like it. And he's trying to destroy it in a big way. And I could go into a lot of details there, but, uh, mm, this is being recorded, so I don't want to get in trouble. There's a lot going on right now with St. Joseph. A ton of stuff going on with St. Joseph. There's a battle going on, in a certain sense, 
for the real identity of St. Joseph right now in a huge way, in a huge way. Now, why did I decide to put this book together in the first place? Like just to write another book? What was the inspiration behind it? Well, as a priest now for almost 17 years, um, I was having people come to me. You know, I speak at conferences, parishes, events, this, that, and the other. And people were coming to me, man. And they were like, Father, I don't get it. Why can't two men get married? <laughs> and I'm like, excuse me? What? And they're like, why can't, what's the problem? Why is the church so mean and nasty? Why is the church a bunch of haters? You're right. And I'm like, where are you getting that? The church doesn't hate anybody. That's, you know, the truth is it, it, it may sting because it's medicine, but just because knowledge of truth, you know, doesn't mean that you're a hater. It's wrong. It's not right. Right. Well, we're all sinners, broke, wounded. We all got baggage and issues. All of it. me first. Right. Pray for me. But this is this is not right. And so I saw such confusion and people were saying, you know, my my son identifies as a as, as as a girl and now we call her Nancy, him Nancy or whatever. It's okay, right, Father? It's okay. And I'm like, oh man, <laughs> wow. We're confused today. We've got attacks on marriage and the family like never before. Like never before. You know, Sister Lucia dos Santos, the longest lived visionary of the Fatima apparitions. She kind of got the bum end of that stick, by the way. I mean, the other two got canonized. The other the other one lived to like 100 years old or something. I think she's only, is she a venerable now? A servant of God, for sure. I think she might be a venerable now, but it's like, dang. So she said that the final battle between the Lord and the kingdom of Satan will be over marriage and the family. Yep. Got that right. I mean, today with divorce rates at an all-time high, when 60% of all families do not have a father, 60%, that's the latest statistic, more than half don't have a father. We've got problems, right? This is a huge issue. And so, you know, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to put something like this together, because it, it dawned upon me with this crisis that we've got going on, you know, we, we need a good loving father to restore order because there's such a father wound. And now, sadly, we've even got a major father wounds in the church. We've had scandals. We've had so many things. I don't need to detail them for you. You know what they are. Horrible, sinful, sometimes criminal things. Uh, shameful stuff, right? A lot of father wounds. Well, what better person to turn to, to correct this, to restore order in this messed up household than to the head of the Holy Family, than to St. Joseph? Right? He took care uh, 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 of Jesus and Mary. If he took care of them, he can take care of us. And now's his time. We've got this building movement. So that's that's the first reason. The second reason is the whole world needs to be re-evangelized. I mean, even Christian countries now, you know, they're falling apart all over the place. And, you know, St. Joseph, in many ways, was the first Christian missionary. He's the one who took Jesus to pagan territory, to Egypt. Now we need St. Joseph to, to bring Jesus back to former Christian countries because we've lost it. And these aren't this isn't Father Calloway saying, sounding mean and nasty and, you know, condemning people. Well, I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just stating the facts. If you don't like what I'm saying, to listen to these words of St. John Paul II. The patronage of St. Joseph must be invoked as ever necessary for the church, not only as a defense against all dangers, but indeed primarily as an impetus for her renewed commitment to evangelization in the world and to re-evangelization, re-evangelization, tough word, and those lands and nations where religion and the Christian life were formerly flourishing and are now put to a hard test. We're being put to a hard test today. Where, where are we going to go? We need to go to St. Joseph. And, you know, many of us have done Marian consecrations, and I encourage those. If you haven't done that yet, do it. It's life-changing stuff. It's amazing stuff. But see, now with this attack on the family, we've got to bring in the secret weapon who's been hidden in the background for so long. We've got to bring in the terror of demons, the great St. Joseph, to turn things around because it's the family that's being attacked. Remember, salvation began in a family. And that's why Satan hates the family and he wants to destroy the family. Salvation began within the context of the marriage of Mary and Joseph. So that's why Satan hates marriage. So we've got to bring in the head of the Holy Family. We've got to bring in the spouse of the Immaculata. We've got to bring in Saint Joseph. That's the reasons why I put this book together. There's other reasons as well, but those are the primary reasons. 
Now, some people have said, well, how can you consecrate yourself to St. Joseph if you've already consecrated yourself to the Virgin Mary? Isn't that contradictory? Isn't that going to take away from what I've given to the Blessed Virgin Mary? No. Heck, no, of course not. We are not children of a one-parent spiritual family. Mary is our spiritual mother, and St. Joseph is our spiritual father. Is, would your mother be upset if you also went to your father? Of course not. Of course not, right? I mean, that's like saying about, about you know, Mary and Joseph, oh, I love her, but there's some other dude in the background, kind of in the shadows, some old guy, I don't know, he's like holding a cane. I don't pay much attention to him. That's silly. He's your spiritual father. We need both of them. And by doing that, we're actually imitating Jesus Christ, right? In the Gospel of Luke, what does it say? We'll get into that in day one. That Jesus, in his human nature, you know, growing up, he increased in wisdom and wisdom and stature before God and man under the watchful care of his parents. It doesn't say parent. It says parents. If Jesus entrusted himself to Mary and Joseph, we need to entrust ourselves to Mary and Joseph. It doesn't take away anything from Mary and consecration. As a matter of fact, it, it, it kind of complements it and it brings it full circle. In the time of crisis of families, we need the Holy Family. We need our Father. This is what we're going through right now. Okay, so we need, I, I, we need both. We really do let's imitate Jesus. Now, um, also, some people have asked, well, what is consecration? I mean, I thought you could only consecrate yourself to God. Well, yeah, technically, right? If you want to get, if you want to make distinctions, 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 okay, technically, yes. But we're talking about a pious filial consecration, which basically means an entrustment of yourself to your spiritual parents. And this is a, you know, tried and true method, you know, throughout Christianity. And St. Louis de Montfort actually isn't the inventor of Marian consecration. That's been around for a very long time. It's just he gave form to it. He gave a method to it when he did what he did. And it was brilliant what he did. You know, brilliant. But we can also do this for St. Joseph, you know, because we, we, they have the ability to accept that gift that we give to them as their spiritual children and to help clean us up and make us better and take us to Jesus. Because all Marian consecration, any form of consecration to St. Joseph is all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus Christ. So we can consecrate ourselves to the person of the Virgin Mary, and to the person of St. Joseph. Yes, we go through them to Jesus. Jesus is our ultimate end. But we can give ourselves to Mary and Joseph because we are their children, and they will help us. And this is, this is such a treasure for us. Anybody who's done Marian consecration knows it's a game changer. It changes your life. Changes, you know, heals marriages. Vocations come from it. Well, watch about what's about to happen when we bring in St. Joseph. It's going to be explosive. There's going to be a, a, a major movement of consecration and renewal in families, in, in, in men especially, and I think even in the priesthood. I think even among the bishops, that there will be great renewal when we turn to St. Joseph. Okay, so the structure of the book, and I know I'm going in this. I won't be doing it like this every day. Don't worry. Don't panic. Don't freak out. But I want to do this because I want to give you the background before we start going through the days themselves, okay? And there's not much to day one anyway. So the format of the book is the Litany of St. Joseph, where every day I take a title uh, from the Litany, and I give like a little short reading on it, and then a longer reading, a more substantial reading on it, and then it ends with the Litany of St. Joseph, okay? Um that's how I set the book up. And people, have, the feedback so far has been great. People have said, Father, thank you so much uh, for this. It's really easy to follow. Some people have said that the e-versions, like the Kindle or whatever, you know, it's a little, it's not as easy as when you have the hard copy because there you have to flip back, you know, and forth. And I don't even have a Kindle, man. So I pity all you people that got one of those things. I, I like a real book in my hands, but I know the whole world's gone e-version, this, that, and the other. But um, some people have told me it's a little difficult because you got to be flipping and whatnot. But either way, it's not too difficult. I tried to set it up as easy as I, as I possibly could uh, for people to do. Now, some people have gotten confused. You know, the book's been out for four months. And by the way, there, we've sold officially now 
over 100,000 copies of the book in four months. It's gone into, I think, five printings now. Um, it's being translated into five languages as we speak, and there will probably be more down the road. Many of you are asking me, where's the Spanish? It's coming. Don't worry. Don't panic. Um, should be out sometime in the late summer, probably August, September, maybe, something like that. We're working the you know virus, the whole situation in the world messed things up a little bit with timelines and so forth. The French is done, uh, and they did it in France, um, but they got to put the book together and stuff. And there's the Polish they're working on, the uh, Croatian, Slovakian they're working on. So, yeah, so those are coming. Um, all right. Now, I want to tell you about something neat that I'm going to do. At the end of this, these 33 days, the last five days of the 33 days, I'm going to do something special because I'm so grateful that you guys are tuning in. And I need you to help me to continue to pro promote it because after we're done, you know, at that time, probably most parishes are going to be fully reopened, hopefully, God willing. Um, and we'll get back to some normalcy, hopefully. It'd be a great time for you to start it in your parish, right, as, as a group, uh, because parishes will be open again. A lot of people have been doing this kind of stuff online. Uh, but after this, we can start doing it in parishes again. So as an incentive for that, to help promote the book, the last five days of the consecration, I'm going to do giveaways. I'm going to give away 50 items. You heard that right. Five, zero, 50 items. Now, how do you participate in that? Okay. Now I'm saying this now and I'll say it at the end of every day, but I wanted to say it uh, now so I don't forget. Um, I'm going to give away 10 books of Consecration of St. Joseph signed. Um, and one of them, this one I'm using right now, this is going to be like the major one because I'm making notes in it and I'll give this one away. I'll hand you, I'll send this one to whoever wins uh, this one for what it's worth, right? Um, so 10 of those. And then what I'm going to do, I went out of frame there for a minute, but is also on those days for the last five days of the consecration, I'm going to give away 10 of these. These are the canvas images, only some of them. And I'll be talking more about this stuff as we go through the program. These are sweet, right? They're super nice. This is a cover of the book one. Super, super nice. And then we got the heavy duties, man. The Immaculata and the Terror of Demons. Check out that bad boy. I commissioned that from an artist in Malta. Who paints like this today? Unbelievable. Like this dude walked out of the 15th century or something. Is that beautiful or what? I'm going to give away 10 of these, 10 of this one specific, 10 of the other one, 10 of these. And I'm going to give away 10 of these bad boys. See, that's the gigantic one behind me. You can't get the size behind me. That, I got special privileges. I, I did that one. But I'm going to give away 10 of these. This is St. Joseph, the Terror of Demons. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And then I'm going to give away 10 more that I don't have yet. I just had a new one done. It's on the website, but I don't actually have the physical copy yet. I'll show that when I get it. How can you participate in this? To help me promote Consecration of St. Joseph, any time between now and the five days at the end of the 33 days, if you do a review of the book on Amazon, you're in. And even if you've already done one, by the way, because a lot of people are doing this again for the second and third time. If you've already done one, you're in. Because on those last five days, I'm going to have another device, and I'm going to randomly scroll. And I'm going to just ping, okay, Adeo Datus, whoever that is, or whatever the title is that you did it with. I'm going to select 10 a day for the last five days, and you'll win those. And they come to you free in the mail. They're yours. So do the review on Amazon. It super helps promote this book. People will buy it. They, they go to buy something else. They see it pop up in the side margins. They're like, oh, that's interesting. Cool cover. Click, put it in my basket, buy it. And then you've done something tremendous for a soul. Their life could change. Their marriage could be healed. A young man could get a vocation to the priesthood from something like that. So I'll be repeating that every day. It's going to be awesome. Okay, my friends, let's get in to, uh, oh, the last thing, the last thing before we get into day one. In the book and on the website, and let me tell you about the website. Maybe some of you don't have the book yet. Consecration to St. Joseph.org is the website that the Marian Fathers designed, and it's sweet. It is a sweet. It's 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 like attractive. It's not an eyesore. It's not bombarding you with all kinds of stuff. It's just got simple things you can click. Finding out about the book, the introduction, 
And then the chart. There's a consecration chart that's on the website and in the book as well that gives you options, suggestions for when to do it. Oddly enough, the one that we're doing right now isn't in the book because, you know, we're ending it on Father's Day in the United States, June 21st. And that always changes. The date is never all. It's not always June 21st, at least in the United States. So um, that one's not here. But these are some other suggested ones. So if you later on want to do it on your own or do it maybe with your spouse or with your parish, these are suggestions. But you could do it at, at any time. I've actually heard spouses, husband and wives, they've done it so that it ends um, on their wedding anniversary. And I think that's really nice. I think that is really, really nice. One of these days, I'm probably going to do it um, on my priesthood anniversary. That'd be really neat. Okay, my friends. So that's all the introduction. I'm not going to repeat that stuff in the future, except for the contest stuff, reminding you about that. Let's get into day one, because this is this is where, where you know, we really go deep here. As you can see, the, the readings for each day are simple. They're two pages. That's it. The days are just two pages. I intentionally made it that way. When we were going through it, I said, if there's any overlap and it goes to page three, we got to cut it down because I just want every day to be two pages and that's it before the bigger reading. So day one, why consecration to St. Joseph? Well, St. Peter Julian Imard answers it pretty easily. And I already read half of this quote at the beginning. He says, when God wishes to raise a soul to greater heights, he unites it to St. Joseph by giving it a strong love for the good saint. My friends, we need holiness today in the church. We need holiness today in families. We have got to return to virtue. We have got to return to common sense. We've got to get back to the basics. And I think that the way that the Holy Spirit wants us to do that today is to bring in St. Joseph, our loving spiritual father. Because to be consecrated to St. Joseph is to become like him, is to, is to imitate him, is to acquire his virtues. See, you can't give what you don't have. Well, Mary is the Immaculate Conception. She desires to help us acquire grace, to become holy, to, to, to ourselves, flee from sin, and, 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 and become holy and immaculate ourselves. Right. We what Mary received at the beginning of her existence. God wants to get to all of us, you know, as we travel through life. And when we die, God wants to make us immaculate in heaven. See, that's why I've got a loving mother to imitate, to, to come close to, because she has that gift and she can help us get it. Well, St. Joseph has extraordinary graces as well, though not an immaculate conception. He's an extraordinary saint. As we'll go through the book, we'll see the greatest saint after the Blessed Virgin Mary. And as our spiritual father, we should want to resemble him. Don't all children resemble their parents? Now, Mary and Joseph are not our biological parents, but we nonetheless should look like them spiritually. When we consecrate ourselves to Mary, we become a more faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. When, when the Holy Trinity looks upon us, he'll see a Marian imprint. We've been stamped. With a Marian imprint. That's what Marian consecration is. Well, when we consecrate ourselves to St. Joseph, the Holy Trinity will also see in us those virtues, those qualities, those blessed gifts that he gave to our spiritual father. Because St. Joseph wants us to have those, and he's going to teach us those. He's going to help us. And he's going to make of us a more faithful disciple of Jesus and more faithful children of the Blessed Virgin Mary. St. Joe, that's what he wants for us. You know, something amazing is as I went through the, the study for this, because it took me three years to write the book. You know, I discovered tons of things, man. I, I didn't know a lot of this stuff. I didn't know that Joseph meant anything. I mean, usually everything has some meaning behind it, but I had never looked into it. Joseph means increase. That's what his name means. And, and I didn't discover that until I read this quote from St. Bernard of Clairvaux where he says, who and what manner of man this blessed Joseph was, you may conjecture from the name by which a dispensation being allowed, he deserved to be so honored as to be believed and to be called the father of God. What? Right? You may conjecture it from his very name, which being interpreted means increase. That's where I say in the next sentence, St. Joseph is the increaser. He will increase your spiritual life. 
He will increase your relationship with Jesus Christ. He will increase your closeness to the Virgin Mary. He will increase grace, virtue in you. He will increase your relationship with the church. That's what he does. And by saying that, we're saying that he is going to decrease your selfishness, your sinfulness, your, your bad habits, your addictions, your problems, all those things. He's going to come in and he's going to cut those things. He's going to help you to become a saint. A saint. The role of every parent is to strive to get their children to heaven. How much more so with Mary and Joseph? That's what they want for us. And that's what consecration to St. Joseph can help us to achieve. I want to go to heaven. I want to be there. I want to be there with all of you. That's our ultimate end, our ultimate goal in life. This is a secret, my friends. Not what I just said there, but St. Joseph, he's been hidden. For, for 2,000 years. And we're going to unpack it in incredible ways from what the saints have said, what mystics have said. And you're going to wonder why we've been chosen during this time to come to know him in such a deep, profound way. Because this secret weapon of Christianity is about to be unsheathed. It's about to, to step on the stage in a huge way. When you've got a war going on and you've, you've tried everything, and you've exhausted your resources, but you've kept a secret weapon. You bring it on the battlefield. That's St. Joseph, the great St. Joseph. I firmly believe that he's about to come on the scene in a huge way, that maybe some of those prophecies from of old are going to be fulfilled. I pray that it's in our day because we need this renewal. We need it more than ever. Blessed William Joseph Chaminade, another figure in the book I quote a lot. We'll learn about him later. St. Joseph was not a passive instrument in the great work of our salvation. He played a very active role, and that is why he was included in the merciful counsels of the incarnate wisdom. I'll end with this, and then we'll pray the litany of St. Joseph, and we'll end for today. St. Peter Giuliani Mard said this. He's a great one, too, my friends. We are going to consecrate ourselves to St. Joseph. We shall place at his feet all that we are and all that we have. Oh, yes. The time has come. The time has come for St. Joseph to come into the life of the church in a way that he's never been before. Into the marriages. Into seminaries. Into seminaries. We need him. We need him in chanceries. We need him in parishes. We need him in dioceses. We need him in homes. We need him in convents. We need him everywhere. This is the way that we're going to do something very pleasing to God. This is going to usher in the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This is going to be a spiritual powerhouse of renewal for the church. So my friends, spread this. Let people know about it. Even if they miss day one, they can watch it later and jump on board. And these are going to be saved. People can watch it later and jump on board. We're on the verge of something tremendous. Remember, these are not Father Calloway's words. These are the words of Pope St. John the Twenty-Third. Uh, of St. Saint, Saint Jose Manionet in Spain and so many others. All right, my friends. So let's pray the litany of St. Joseph. Now I will pray the whole thing. You can just follow along where you are. This is such a beautiful prayer. I love this prayer. So I'll say it, but you can, wherever you are, you just say the second half. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray for us. Chase Guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster Father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous Defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph Most Just, pray for us. Joseph Most Chaste, pray for us. Joseph Most Prudent, pray for us. Joseph Most Courageous, pray for us. Joseph most obedient, pray for us. Joseph most faithful, 
pray for us. Mirror of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workmen, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless all of those who are watching this live stream for their particular intentions, for themselves, for marriages, for young people, for renewal, for conversions. We pray for the restoration of people to the sacraments, to sanctifying grace, that they would come back to the practice of the faith. Pray for extraordinary graces to be poured out through the great Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph, intercede for us. We want to know you. And we want to love you so that you can bring us closer to Mary and closer to Jesus Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me. And we will see all of you tomorrow here, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time in the United States. God bless you guys. And have a good night.